Good morning. When Peter tried walking on water and began to sink, he called out to Jesus. When the disciples were on a ship in the middle of a storm, they woke up Jesus for help. When the woman with a bleeding disorder wanted to be healed, she sought out Jesus. When the blind man Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was walking by, he shouted to Jesus to have mercy on him. Throughout the New Testament, there are examples of ordinary people coming to grips with their situation by coming to the decision and the conclusion, give me Jesus. And this morning, that's really what I want to focus my thoughts on for a few minutes. Give me Jesus because, aside from everything else, he is my constant. However, aside from all those people that said, give me Jesus in the New Testament, there were also situations where people chose something else, someone else besides Jesus. For example, um, Judas spent three years with Jesus in his ministry, but when put to the test, Judas's response was, give me money. Pilate, he spoke with Jesus. He examined Jesus. He found no fault in him at all. Yet Pilate said, give me the acceptance of the people. The rich young ruler, even after a private meeting with Jesus, he said, give me my possessions instead. And he walked away. The Pharisees could have sat at Jesus' feet and, and learned from his wisdom, but he, they said repeatedly, give me the power and prestige of my position as a religious icon instead of choosing Jesus. But you know, before we become too critical of those who had Jesus in their very midst and chose someone or something else, let's take a little bit of time to, to look at the world in which we live, the country in which we live, our neighborhoods, our companies, our schools, and yes, the toughest of all, let's look in the mirror. You see, when given a choice, when we look at life's menu, the decision that each one of us has to come to, to realize is this, am I going to say, give me Jesus, or do I choose something else instead? So for a few minutes, I want us to look at things that people may have chosen instead of Jesus, things that maybe at one point in time or another, you and I have chosen. And maybe for all the right reasons we thought at the time, but in reality, they were foolish decisions. You see, some might say there's power and prestige in owning a fancy sports car. And if one sports car is awesome, then owning another one is even better. It's even more impressive. So we might say, give me the feeling of freedom and power. That's all I need. Someone else might say, there's so much safety and security in owning a large, beautiful house, plus the fact that that status that I can maintain within my neighborhood, within my community, among my friends. So some will say, give me the sense of security and status. That's all I need. Toys. <laughs> That's what sets me apart from everyone else. My toys, my escape from reality, my source of coolness. Give me that rush. That's all I need. For me, though, it's the social scene. That's what I need. I mean, that's where it's at for me. In the fast lane, you know, special friends, fun times. Give me the popularity. That's all I need. Others might say, let's just keep it simple. I just want lots of money. I mean, with money, I can control my future. Give me the exhilarating feeling of enormous, enormous wealth. That's all I need. Hey, others might say, if I can't play sports, if I can't be famous on my own, then what I want to do is I want to enjoy the fame of others. Let me get lost in the adrenaline of sports. That's where I'm going to focus my, my time and my attention and my energy. 
following my team, following my heroes. Give me the thrill of victory. That's all I need. Well, maybe I want to reach the heights of power. I want to rub elbows with the top executives of the world. I want to be one of them. I can command respect, even fear from those who might be below me. Give me lofty position. That's all I need. Hey, I just want a huge portfolio. I want stocks and bonds. I want investments that are in the millions. I can be a mover and a shaker in the business world. I can reap the rewards of being rich and famous. Give me the financial security found in the stock market. That is all I need. Really? What more could anybody want? I mean, any one of those things could give us what we think we need. And any one of those is possible in our country. I mean, where you can think about even thinking about any one of those scenarios could be something that somebody dreams about. That somebody looks at and says, wow, if I just had that. But here's the reality. In Matthew chapter 6, beginning of verse 19, it says this. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what about all those things that, that society would tell us that we need? What about all those things that as we sit and we dream, we think of, wow, if I just had that, that's what I need. Well, here is some of that harsh reality. You know, the power and prestige of those fancy sports cars can end up sitting somewhere in a field rusting or in a junkyard. That security and that status of that house that we thought gave us everything we needed, it gave us that symbol of success, can go up in smoke in a matter of a few minutes and be reduced to nothing but ashes. How about those toys that we wanted so much that we thought gave us coolness? You know, those toys, that rush, that source of coolness can be gone in an instant. And you know, it can be gone along with our life or it can simply be left sinking. How about that social status? How about that popularity that we wanted so much? What about that? What about that popularity, that thrill of the social scene, but too often it leaves people dazed and confused, left only to wonder, what have I done? Well, surely we can't go wrong with money, right? I mean, that's a, there's a never-ending supply of the money that I have, that, that exhilaration of having so much wealth. Well, what happens is a down economy rising prices, decreasing property values, and more problems than solutions. And suddenly what we thought we needed isn't really of much value at all. Well, you know, there's that sports though. I, I, I've got my team, I've got my heroes, I've got the people that, that I follow, and that closet that's full of jerseys that gives me some sort of claim to fame, if you will, but the reality is this, the world's fastest man is stripped of his gold. The legend lies to Congress. The gifted is arrested for assault. The celebrated becomes disgraced. The larger than life hero tarnishes the game. The record setter's legacy fades due to some scandal. The champions are found to be cheaters. So much for the thrill of victory being all that we needed. And reaching those lofty heights of, of that executive position with a company, 
the status that comes with that, the power, the position, suddenly isn't such a big deal when it turns out to be gotten by embezzlement and fraud. And all those stocks and bonds that we had, all that great portfolio, the, the investments that, that we thought gave us everything we needed, all that security, comes face to face with the reality that what goes up must come down. You see, all those things that people seek after, all those things that look so good, in and of themselves may or may not be wrong, but when they become all we need, they too will perish, just like what we read about a few minutes ago. In Titus chapter 2, beginning in verse 11, I want to read those passages to you and just ask that you, that you listen to those. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. The reality is, is that there's really only one constant, only one reliable source of security, only one everlasting power, only one hero who won't disappoint us, and only one answer to the question, what do I need? And that answer is this, give me Jesus, because he is my constant. Thank you.